uh, filed suit against the state of Illinois and actually won their case earlier this month. Many states would face the same fate without the Lee bill. I believe that there are a number of things the Bush administration can and should do to end genocide, including enforcing, along with our allies, a no-fly zone over Darfur, which I've asked for, had a bill that had several hundred sponsors, but the then the former chairman, uh, Hyde, um, um, had my bill tabled, and a new bill came out that took out the no-fly zone. I think if that legislation would have been able to go through, we would have seen different results in, in Sudan now, but uh, that's the past. We have to move forward. Uh, we need to continue to push sending UN and NATO troops <clears throat> to help the African Union. Just yesterday, Bashir said he wants to renegotiate the agreement that he first said UN troops could come in. Then he said it has to be a a, a hybrid uh, force, and now he's saying we've got to renegotiate and maybe no force at all. And so we need to uh, continue to push the United Nations to impose international sanctions on leaders uh, of the National Congress Party. And I shared these points with President Bush last month when the Congressional Black Caucus met with him, and he indicated a strong interest in trying to move forward on issues. At the same time, we pursue military and diplomatic options to address the crisis in Darfur. We should apply economic pressure on the regime in Khartoum in 2005. As Ms. Lee mentioned, New Jersey became the first state in the Union to introduce legislation, actually offered, authored by my brother, State Assemblyman William Payne, which requires New Jersey companies with an equity tie in Sudan to redeem, sell, divest, or withdraw their investments. New Jersey was really the second state to enact the legislation, but our legislation said in three months, and all money of pension funds in New Jersey and companies doing business with Sudan, 17 foreign corporations, $2.16 billion have been identified, and equity ties have been severed completely in three months, 90 days, so it can happen. There are uh, six other states have enacted similar legislation. There are campaigns in 20 more states to do this. Why? Because history has shown that economic pressure helps change policies. You should know that in 1985, New Jersey was the first state in the Union to divest from South Africa divesting over $4 billion in state pension funds from private companies. And as Congressman Wolf mentioned, that really hit in the, where it hurt in South Africa. This proved a watershed event as states and universities across the United States as well divested. The action in conjunction with the Congress's Ron Dellum's Comprehensive Anti-Apartheid Act, the CAAA, widely credited with helping to bring an end to apartheid in South Africa. Not only did economic pressure bring change in South Africa, it has, it has caused the Sudanese government to change its behavior. In 1997, when President Clinton enacted sanctions by executive order due to Sudan's complex, uh, complicity with terrorists, the Sudanese actually took action, shutting down terrorist camps. We are told that the government continues to cooperate with the U.S. counter-terrorist effort, though I fear that the counter-terrorist assistance is inflated and our government has grown too close to cartoon. I think they're telling us what they want us to tell us to make us feel they are really cooperating, but I doubt very seriously if that government can tell the truth on anything. I should mention that the president, that President Omar al-Bashir and the National Congress Party in Khartoum, Sudan, which was formerly known as the National Islamic Front, came to power in a military coup in 1989. And from 91 to 96, this regime gave safe haven to Osama bin Laden. So these are some very horrible people we're dealing with. As I conclude, since our senator is here, uh, uh, in addition to what I have stated about divestment, the divestment campaign has helped discourage international companies from investing in Sudan. As Ms. Lee said, I understand that Siemens, well-known German company, decided to halt its operations in Sudan, and others are questioning going in. One factor that led to the decision was the effort that doing business in a country against which 
there is an active divestment campaign had a had a, a reputation that was a stain on the company and so less investments mean less revenue for the National Congress Party less revenue means fewer resources for which they can buy weapons for their military and the murderous John Jaweed militia on the issue of weapons China is a major supplier of weapons to the regime in Khartoum and the largest oil developer in Sudan the Congressional Black Caucus has met with the Chinese ambassador and we will meet with him again after the break to once again insist that China stop their holding up of actions in uh, in, in uh, Sudan. As I conclude, Mr. Chairman, Congress cannot do less in the face of genocide than state governments have done. We must take similar action and soon. It has been four years and 400,000 deaths since the tragedy in Darfur began. It is long past time that decisive action is taken. While we all recognize that divestment will not resolve the conflict by itself, it is important that we keep the pressure on. I am expecting a call in an hour from Salva Kiir, who is working with now the rebel groups because they have no one leader and he's trying to bring them together so that they can negotiate as a unit. That's another issue that we have to get moving. But with that, I, I appreciate the opportunity and yield back. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, quickly to um, Congressman Wolf, it's, uh, this is an issue of priority, and I know I speak for the chairman of the full committee. Uh, we'll act on this quickly. I assure you your, your, um, your comment to us and encouragement was well taken. Um, I would like to um, now introduce a colleague from uh, the other body. I don't know why we can't say the Senate. Um, but anyways, um, <laughs> uh, Senator Sam Brownback. Senator Brownback, also a longtime advocate on this issue, has recently called on state pensions to divest in Darfur and is a co-sponsor of the Darfur divestment legislation, uh, Senate 831, the Sudan Div Divestment Authorization Act of 2007, a bill introduced by Senator Durbin that would authorize states and local governments to prohibit investment of states' assets in any company that has business relationship with Sudan. And with that, we're happy to have you, Senator. Thank you so much. Please. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman Gutierrez. Uh, thank you, Member Castle. Good to see you. Congressman Moore, colleague from Kansas, uh, good to join you. And I, uh, uh, you're, you're with the, uh, the leading squad here, and Congresswoman Lee and Frank Wolf and uh, Congressman Payne, uh, both Congressman Wolf and Payne and I have traveled together to the Sudan, and these uh, uh, are the lead individuals that know this topic better than anybody else, and I think probably are more frustrated than anybody else in the entire Congress and possibly country about how long this has gone on for. And this is the second genocide. It's not the first one. We didn't call it that in the South, but there were two million people killed uh, by this same murderous government that's in Khartoum, that's doing this now in the West, in Darfur. So uh, this just keeps going on, and, and the frustration level keeps building, and the inaction continues. And now you see that the government in Khartoum is saying, well, we're not going to allow UN troops in at this time. We'd said we would, we said we'd work with people, and now we're not going to do it. Uh, I think this is a simple proposition, this particular bill on divestment that says, as uh, one of the other people said, and perhaps it's already been quoted, uh, not on our watch, not on our dime. Uh, we're not going to continue to fund this government in its second genocide off of money and resources from the United States, period. Uh, and we should move these forward aggressively in the states, and I applaud New Jersey for leading in this area. My state is now the uh, state senate has voted to divest. The House is considering it. We need to make sure it's clear that they can do this. I think these are bills intended to clear up any sort of uh, questionable category if there really is. I don't know that there particularly is, but this is something we need to clear up and we need to make a clear statement on it. And if we can get a, a, um, a wave of states doing this and then encourage private individuals to do the same with the statements that the states are doing, that individuals should look at their own resources and see are they investing in any companies that are doing business in Sudan. And if this government continues to desire to have a genocide conducted, it's not going to be with our money, period. And I think we have to be very clear and very strong about that. I don't think that in and of itself is sufficient. 
uh, met with my colleague from Illinois uh, last week, 